You're probably gonna find this hard to believe, but high gas prices are just not a big deal. They're not. So we're gonna prove this. We're gonna go through the math on gas prices. Always love doing the math on the podcast. By the way, I used to do math on the radio and we had a radio consultant and he said, never do math on the radio. And I'm like, look, I was a math major. I'm, well, what do you expect? I'm going to do math on the radio. So we're going to do math on a podcast. So let's say you drive 15,000 miles a year. I drive like 17 or 18,000. So let's say you drive 15,000 miles a year and you get 24 miles per gallon. That means you will consume 625 gallons of gas a year. So... If the price of gas goes up by a dollar, that's 625 more dollars a year, which comes out to about $50 a month. $50 a month is not a big deal for most people, okay? I would say if you make less than $40,000 a year, then $50 a month might be a big deal. But for most people, the majority of people, they can easily absorb another $50 in expenses a month. Especially if you're doing things the Jared Dillian way, okay? If you have an emergency fund and all that crap, right? So this shouldn't be, $50 a month should not be the end of the world. If it is the end of the world, then you're doing something wrong. That's the point, okay? It does suck because you don't get any value for that. It's not like you're spending $50 more on gas and you're getting better gas or you're getting more gas. You're getting the same amount of gas and it just costs more, so it sucks, Nobody wants to spend money for no reason, but you can handle it. Now, if the price of gas went up to $10 a gallon, yeah, then that might be a different story. Well, do I think that the price of gas will go up to $10 a gallon? All I will say is that that is within the range of possibilities. Could happen. Might happen. Okay. Now, I've traded oil before. I have never made money trading oil. Never. Oil is the hardest commodity in the world to trade. It moves around like 9% a day, which is kind of weird, you know? I mean, this is arguably the most important commodity in the world, and the price fluctuates by like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9% a day. It's nuts. It's incredibly volatile. Somebody is making a lot of money off of this. My guess is is that people who trade algorithmically are probably making a lot of money off of crude oil. So two years ago, the price was negative. Today, the price is over 100 bucks. That's nuts. It went from negative to over 100 bucks in two years. So, and now, is it cheaper? Is it expensive? You know, if you think about just the act of drilling into the ground, drilling horizontally, blasting rocks with sand and sucking out oil and piping it out and refining it and taking it on trucks to gas stations. And you can buy this stuff for $4 a gallon. I mean, actually, it doesn't seem that expensive. I can picture a lot of scenarios where oil is more than $4 a gallon. I mean, honestly, it still seems cheap if you look at it that way. And not to get political or anything, but we should really stop beating up on the oil companies. The oil companies, they're good people, you know? They power our entire civilization, and they get absolutely no thanks for it. So if you know somebody who works in the energy industry, give them a pat on the back, buy them a beer. Now, you hear people like Elizabeth Warren talking about these greedy oil companies raising the price of oil. You know, like there's an oil store somewhere and the owner of the oil store decides to raise the price of oil in the oil store. That's not how it works. It's a globally traded commodity. Everybody is a price taker. Okay, Nobody is manipulating or controlling the price of oil. Not. Now, having said that, oil companies do make more money when the price of oil goes up, but they're not setting the price of oil. Everybody is setting the price of oil. There's a demand side and there's a supply side. You're setting the price of oil. If you take a trip to California, then you're setting the price of oil. You're buying a couple hundred gallons worth of gasoline. If you stay home, you're setting the price of oil. There's a demand side and a supply side. Anyway, the point here is if gas prices go up, it's really not that big of a deal. And people make a huge, they 
freak out about gas prices. And it's totally not necessary. Let me put it this way. There are a lot of other things that you do in your personal finances that have a much bigger impact than gas prices. If you go to Target and you spend 150 bucks on crap, that's three months worth of gas. And that's just an impulse purchase. You just, you know, you go get one of those red plastic shopping carts and you take your three-year-old and stick them in the front and the kids yelling and every, that's what they do in Target. All the kids yell. All the kids are screaming their heads off. I, I couldn't work in Target. So you spend 150 bucks on like picture frames and plates and shit like that. <laughs> and it's three months worth of gas, you know? You should, and the other thing is, is that you should not be worried about conserving gas, right? Like I'm hearing this, like, oh, I want to go to Charlotte. This is for Myrtle Beach. I live in Myrtle Beach. Oh, I want to go to Charlotte, but it costs too much. All right, let's do the math on that. So to and from Charlotte round trip is about a tank and a half of gas, which is a hundred bucks. So yeah, that's a lot of money. So a lot of people say I'm not spending a hundred bucks to go to Charlotte, but before when the price of gas was lower to and from Charlotte was 70 bucks and people were doing that. So basically what you're saying is you're not taking a trip to Charlotte because of the extra 30 bucks. That doesn't make any sense. You know, that's what you should care about. So I had to get a medical exam for an insurance policy I'm getting and the medical person, the phlebotomist or whatever she is, she wouldn't drive out to my house, which is 30 minutes away because of the gas prices. I'm like, come on, stop the madness. This is insane. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, let's do the math on that, right? If you drive 30 minutes one way, drive 30 minutes the other way, that's like $2 worth of gas. Not going to spend $2. Please stop the madness. It's nuts. It's nuts. So, so let's talk about why oil prices might go even higher. This is a big theme on Twitter these days. There's lots of Twitter accounts that talk about oil prices. So they might go higher. I mean, the big thing is ESG, which you probably heard about. Environment, social, and governance. This is where we say we're not going to invest in the bad companies. We're going to invest in the good companies. And somewhere there are these anointed rating agencies that say these are the good companies and these are the bad companies. And if you want a high ESG score, then you have to invest in the good companies. So that's how that works. So basically what we've done is we've deprived the energy industry of capital equity capital and debt capital. And now capital is very expensive. And so equity is expensive. And if they want to borrow money in the bond market or through loans, it's at very high interest rates because we've deprived them of capital. And by depriving the whole industry, energy industry of capital, we've made it very difficult to invest in new exploration and production. And that is, you know, that's restricted supply, which has caused the price to go up. I would say ESG, is the number one factor of causing prices to go up. And it's funny because I've been complaining about ESG for a while. And I was really talking about the stock market impact, but I didn't really realize the overall economic impact. And ESG is going to blow up the fucking world. Like, it's crazy. This is like the worst thing ever. I mean, really, <laughs> this would be interesting. Let's say Trump is president or DeSantis is president or Larry Hogan or what an XYZ Republican comes in and says, no more ESG investing, right? If you're going to invest, you're going to decide on the investment merits. Now, that would have unintended consequences all of its own, but it's an interesting thought experiment because it might restore supply to the oil market. So, speaking of which, um, my guess is, is that if a Republican gets elected president in 2024, oil prices are going to go down a lot. They're going to go down a lot. And there's actually, there was a poll that came out, hypothetical 2024 poll, that showed that Trump is ahead of Biden 47 to 41 in this poll. So I think Trump is going to run. Like, he's running, for sure. I mean, he saw that poll. Uh, and I think a lot of people aren't going to run against him because Trump is a political wrecking ball, and anybody who runs against them gets their political career ruined. I mean, he just destroys them. So... And, you know, I've heard the argument that DeSantis is going to run against him. And DeSantis kind of has to to get the exposure. And that would be interesting because Trump and DeSantis like each other personally. And I think they would 
they, I think Trump might actually not attack DeSantis too much, but it's hard to predict. I, like I said, I'm not a political expert. Um, one more thing. This is, the, this is the latest thing these days. People don't want to have cash in their bank accounts because of inflation. So theoretically, if you had a million dollars in the bank and we have 7.9% inflation, you're losing $79,000 due to inflation. I get that. That's, that's the academic part. But again, what are your options? Okay, where, you, where else are you going to put that money? Stock market has been pretty sketchy lately. The bond market is a complete fucking disaster. Like, I guess you, maybe you put, take all that money and you put it in commodities. That seems to be working. But that's nuts. You're not going to have all your money in commodities. So the, all the options are bad, right? So, and the other point is, is that cash... We have talked before about the optionality of cash. Cash is a big pile of opportunities. Maybe you want to buy a house. Maybe you want to buy a car. Maybe you want to go to school. And you need that cash to take advantage of these opportunities. You might need that cash for something at some point in the future. It sucks. Inflation sucks. We're dealing with it. I don't know what to tell you. So, Speaking of inflation, universities are getting hit the most by inflation. They are. Because they've already raised their tuition a lot. They can't raise it much more. Okay, And you have faculty and staff that are really getting hit by cost of living increases. And I mean, you know, what I was about to say was that their margins are going to collapse, but they're not for-profit entities. entities. So this really, this really puts the squeeze on colleges and universities. You know, I mean, I'm getting hammered on inflation. I don't really have the ability to raise prices on my newsletter, at least not yet, you know. I did raise prices three years ago, and even that price increase has been kind of a disaster. You know, as a financial newsletter, I don't really have pricing power. But things we need have pricing power. Food has pricing power. You have to buy food. Gas has pricing power. Consumables have pricing power. If toothpaste doubles in price, you still have to buy toothpaste. Or maybe you don't. (laughs) <laughs> I suppose I suppose it's possible you don't need toothpaste. <laughs> so, I mean, what did, what did people use before toothpaste? Was it like baking soda and water or something like that? I suppose you could do that. But then you will have halitosis. Same thing with toilet paper, paper towels, deodorant, anything like that. You know, this is the first time we've had inflation like this in a while. And this inflation is hitting us where it hurts. Honestly, if the price of TVs went up, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Anyway, thanks for listening to the Be Smart Podcast. I'm Jared Dillian. See you next time.